If you're a foodie, you know that one of the most trendy international foods in recent years is the bao, with bao shops popping up across the US, Europe and around the globe. But what are baos and what makes them so popular? I'll never forget tasting my first chow siu bao when I was 11 years old. My best friend, who grew up in Hong Kong, brought some buns to school that her mother had made. The combination of the sweet pork and delicious barbecue sauce wrapped in the softest pillow of dough was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. The bao, or bun, was first developed in China centuries ago as a plain steamed dumpling called manto, not dissimilar to bread. The story goes that during the Three Kingdoms period of the 3rd century AD, one of the most brilliant strategists in Chinese history, Zhuge Liang, was returning victorious from battle against the barbarians when he was faced with a logistical nightmare. He and his army needed to cross a river said to be closely guarded by a deity who demanded that 50 of his soldiers' heads should be thrown into the river in return for safe passage across the water. Thinking creatively and quickly, Juga ordered that 50 buns should be made with round shapes and flat bases, bearing the appearance of the shaven heads of his warriors. The plan was a success. The fake heads were tossed into the river, the deity was deceived and safe passage was granted for the whole army. In celebration of the famous victory over the barbarians as well as the river god, the buns were named Manto, meaning barbarian's heads. Over time, a field variation of manto began to emerge, which was named bao or baozi to distinguish it from the unfilled bun. As the centuries progressed, the filling for baozi became ever more diverse. Meat, vegetables, fruit and even seafood began to be incorporated, and by the time of the Ming Dynasty, baos were a popular street food and sold in shops throughout China. Nowadays, in addition to the traditional steaming method, baos can be baked, boiled or fried. The size can vary hugely, some buns being the size of a dumpling and others as big as a burger. Hong Kong is the original home of my favourite char siu bao, filled with a delicious sweet barbecue pork and encased in a bun made with rice flour, a staple food in southern China. In the north, where the climate is cooler, wheat is more commonly used for the dough, resulting in a thicker, fluffier bun more akin to Western-style bread. In Shanghai, there is a popular and iconic soup dumpling called Xiaolong Bao, filled with a flavorful broth enriched with pork and gelatinous stock that turns into soup once steamed. The happy diner should bite the bun and drink all the liquid goodness before consuming the outer casing. Sounds wonderful to me, and I definitely need to try this one soon. Now a global and trendy food item, baozi have been adapted to suit the preferences of local consumers and have become a popular item for fusion cuisine. Some new creations involve fillings such as chicken, American cheeseburger ingredients, curry or furikake fish finger bao where the fish is coated in breadcrumbs and dusted with a Japanese seasoning made from dried fish, sesame seeds and chopped seaweed. The increasing interest and globalisation of Chinese cuisine, alongside the ease of sharing information through social media, have played a significant role in the rising popularity of baos and the evolution of food culture fuelled by the desire for experimentation and novelty. Baozi continue to evolve and inspire new culinary creations. The versatility of ingredients and cooking techniques has made them one of the most beloved food items around the world. I'm Tasman Little, violinist, recording artist and culture contributor for The China Current. 